tell me a little bit about like what got you into music originally. Like how how did this journey come about wanting to be a part of, you know, Unspoken and then having music be your life? Um, well, it's because my basketball career failed horribly. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I music wasn't really part of my life growing up. My mother is musical and her sisters and they sang in their little group together, but I would say from 16 to about 23, I music was probably 10% of my life. I kind of strummed a little guitar mm-hmm. in my in my bedroom. My junior year I started to learn to play and and um never sang out, sang at my brother's wedding, um, you know, sang maybe three or four times um uh in my life. Um, but when I got saved, I really got radically changed in the Dominican Republic. I went on a self-made missions trip to hang out with this missionary that I didn't know, really to get sober and to um, to serve somebody, you know, grew up in a great Christian home. And so I had that mm-hmm. foundation. And when I got there, just um, the Lord gave me this passion to share the gospel. And I figured, man, if if I could sing, people might listen to what I have to say. You know, the music could maybe start conversations about the Lord. And while I was down there, I met a guitar player from the Dominican and brought him back to Maine as a real life souvenir. Is my joke? Yes, there you go. And um, and then we just started traveling around and um, you know anywhere we could. Coffee house, open mic nights, uh, nursing homes, New York City subways. Uh, we'd go into uh, universities, set up in the cafeteria until we got kicked out. You know. Yeah. That kind of stuff, and uh, the Lord would just kind of open doors for us to the next place, and and so it really wasn't a plan that music was going to be my life. It was honestly Psalm thirty-seven. This is a wonderful psalm. It's there's a wonderful um, in the verses four, five, six, seven, um, a kind of a, a map for uh, for prayer life for us. But the specific verse is Psalm thirty-seven four, which is delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And so for me, when I actually, you know, what this verse is saying is when you wholeheartedly give yourself over to your relationship with God and you take delight and joy and, and um, uh, pleasure in spending time with God, then, then God's spirit begins to work inside of you and, and he begins to well up these desires you didn't even know you had. Right. And these passions yeah. that you didn't have that maybe developed later on. Exactly. That's my story that when I got saved, that God brought these passions and desires I didn't even know I had. I and, love that. Uh, and he's way using bo- it. Yeah. And it's, you know, again, I look at my life and, and I have wants. I have uh, things that, you know, I want to have or want to do or whatever. Um, but honestly, like I look at my life and I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of Ephesians 3.20 is constantly over, you know, by um, it says, um, um, shoot. Usually I have someone be able to, uh, when I have so a brain. So look it up, Ephesians 3.20. No, it's uh, to him who is able to do, to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine by his spirit that's at work within us. And so here's the interesting thing. Like when we give our lives over to God and make that, you know, make loving Jesus, being in love with Jesus, the main concern that he, he gives us these desires, but he's able to accomplish and do more, not because of our skills or our passions or our talents, but by his spirit, mm-hmm. he can do more than we can ask or imagine. And I just look at my life and I say, wow, I mean, honestly, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, I was living in a drug house in Lancaster by mm-hmm. Franklin and Marshall in, in a moldy basement, you know, um, horrible. And yeah. to think that if someone would have told me in that season of my life, God is going to use you in, in, in this way, in that way, in this way. I would have never believed mm-hmm. them. But God is so awesome to redeem the things that, you know, um, the, that we, the mistakes that we make and the things that the enemy has used to try to destroy us. He takes those things and redeems them and, and sets our feet on the solid rock and then does more than we could ask That's or imagine. Exactly. It's wonderful.